Francis Cooper had always assumed that his father would die before his mother. Imagine his surprise early one morning when his father phoned to say his mother was dead. Emily Madison never thought she would be the woman responsible for ending anybody's life. However, as she passed some parked cars in her own little car, somebody's face hit her windscreen. Craig McKay always believed his girlfriend dismissing him for his lack of responsibility was nonsense. Until he opened his washing machine door to find that he had shut one of his cats inside. He opened some windows. His mother's surprise demise means Francis Cooper now finds himself contemplating the possibility that he, as opposed to his grandfather, might be the next of the Coopers to die. So, taking into account age, occupation, income, intelligence, hobbies, genetic predispositions and diet, Francis Cooper is constructing what he hopes will be a scientifically sound timeline of death. Emily Madison still doesn't know what to do. No one else she knows has ever killed anybody before. She's finding it hard. It was only the limited capacity of Craig McKay's bladder which got him out of bed that afternoon. Still half asleep, it was the now futile act of putting down the toilet seat which woke him up fully. He suddenly felt very alone. The first half of the timeline had been easy. Francis Cooper designated that anyone over the age of 70 would be guaranteed dead before anyone currently under the age of 35, meaning that he is automatically assigned a life longer than his grandmother, who, at 76, would be the last of her generation to die. This still only promises him five more years, and it is this which is spurring him on to calculate his optimum life capacity without even stopping for lunch. Aside from the police, Emily Madison hasn't told a soul what she's done. She can't really work out how to fit it into a conversation. But she's beginning to think that she doesn't need to. She doesn't want to be known as that woman who killed a man. She's returned to work. Everything's normal. Yesterday's event had made Craig McKay realise just how much he missed his girlfriend. Apart from small tasks, when she was around, he didn't have to do anything. He has successfully put this observation into more poetic words and is reciting them to her now. The timeline of death is complete. His sister dying next year would be unfortunate, but on the upside, providing that he eats at least three portions of fruit a day, Francis Cooper will live to the ripe old age of 72. Everything is not normal. Emily Madison knows this because normally she doesn't have to excuse herself from lunch to go and cry in toilet cubicles. She feels excluded, lonely, depressed. It seems nothing can take her mind... <gasps> Boots. Craig McKay could be in with a second chance. He can't quite believe his luck. It's just a shame she lives so far away. Having his mother's dead head inches away from his own barely disturbed Francis Cooper. What did disturb him was this, wild cards. Reading about other people's problems had always been one of Emily Madison's favorite things. But now she can't read about someone's problem without relating it to her own. And right now she hates almost everything that is her own, except her boots. Emily Madison is undeserving of new boots. They're wonderful, and she is not. She'd seemed pleased to see him, and when he joked that at least both cats hadn't died, she'd laughed almost as much as he had. But now on his way home, Craig McKay came to a rather unfortunate realization. Francis Cooper was thinking about extraneous variables. You can eat as much fruit as you like, but it won't stop you getting hit by a bus tomorrow. This is it. He's about to die. His father would have to bury his own son, days after he buried his own wife. The notion is so distressing that Francis feels a tear drop from his left eye, and as he watched it fall, he saw it sparkle in a way his mother's eyes used to when she smiled. And he could almost hear her voice. The tears had continued well into the night. Now at lunch, everything was about to change. 
It was the coffee which slipped from the waitress's grip. Emily Madison turned to face her. Her mouth was open, but no words were coming out. No words were needed. Emily could see it in her eyes. Oh, my God. I really didn't mean to do this. This is an accident. Before this moment, if you had asked Craig McKay how long he thought a cat could live without any food or water, he would have told you three days at best. But this cat was a fighter, right up until her death. We're all going to die. We're all going to make mistakes. We could always have done things better. Three months went by before Francis Cooper woke up from his coma. Upon doing so, he no longer fears death or allows it to hold him back. He now leads his own life rather than letting his inevitable death lead him. And he hasn't died. Yeah. Emily Madison started driving again, and touch wood, she hasn't run anyone else over. The scars on her thighs faded over the years, but she never forgot what they taught her, and now really accepts blame. Craig McKay changed his screensaver to that of a virtual aquarium, maintaining a similar level of companionship that you get from keeping real pets. He's still irresponsible, it's just that no one knows it anymore. <laughs>